Today, we are making a really popular upside down German chocolate cake, the earthquake cake. Look at all the craters in this cake. And I made it in this pan that was sent to me as a gift from a viewer, Diane. Thank you, Diane. with Collard Valley Cooks. Today our oven's preheated for 350 degrees and we're going to make an old special, the earthquake cake. Some people call it upside down German chocolate cake and some people call it earthquake cake. It is going to be so delicious. It is coconut, pecans, German chocolate cake mix with cream cheese, butter, and powdered sugar dolloped on the top. So delicious. I've got a measuring cup that I'm gonna put my oil in. You're just gonna go by the directions on the box for your cake mix. So we need a half cup of cooking oil. Now we've already got one and a quarter cups of water in here and three eggs next to me. We're gonna be mixing up just a typical cake mix for one of the layers of this cake. So when I do a cake mix, I typically start out whether what no matter how I'm mixing it up by hand or with the mixer, I typically start out with all the wet ingredients in first. So we're going to add the one and a quarter cups of water, the quarter cup of oil, and three eggs. All right, it's time to add the eggs. You're going to use three eggs. I'm going to go ahead and mix this a little bit and then we'll add our cake mix. I am using a German chocolate super moist cake mix. I'm going to pour it in. It's an easy recipe too. Now we're gonna we're gonna rinse these beaters off because we've got to beat up some cream cheese and butter. I'm gonna go over here and rinse the beaters off and get us another bowl. We're gonna put these back on the mixer. All right, we're gonna put in eight ounces of cream cheese. I just heard the UPS man. He has delivered the volume three cookbooks. We've been waiting on them for two weeks. It's very exciting. So after I get this cake mixed up, I'll start packaging orders for cookbooks. This is a stick of butter, which is a half cup of butter. So you got eight ounces of cream cheese and a half cup of butter. I'm gonna... powdered sugar a little at a time. I'll go ahead and put in a little. And this beater does not have a low to low speed so it's probably going to make a mess. already sweet enough. I personally don't want the cream cheese to be super sweet because then it takes away from the taste of the cream cheese. It's plenty sweet. 
And I put in about two cups of powdered sugar, so that's what my recipe will call for. So now to the fun part, putting it together. So once you've got everything mixed up, clean up your station, and we're going to layer the cake. So really, I only use about a half pound of the powdered sugar. When I wrap my stuff up, I use rubber bands. I love using rubber bands. If you've never done it, it's real convenient. And um, I think I've got a little cream cheese on this bag. I've got to wipe it off. But it's really nice to use rubber bands and put things in the pantry with them. They cost, they're really cheap and they work much better than a chip clip or something like that. And then you don't have to waste your gallon bags and your storage bags. You could just wrap it up like that. Matter of fact, I've got my coconut wrapped up like that right now. Get you a 9 by 13 cake pan. That's a quarter sheet, pretty much. Make sure you do a good job because this is a very sticky, ooey gooey cake. Now we're going to take a cup of coconut and sprinkle it in the bottom. And I'm not measuring. I'm just going to sprinkle coconut in the bottom of my pan. I love Baker's Coconut. I don't know if you can get it where you live, but it is so much moister than everybody else's. It's amazing the difference. For something like this, it don't matter as much. But if you're making a coconut cake, um, I would prefer having the moist coconut on my cake. Now we're going to put pecans in the bottom and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to sprinkle them onto the bottom of the pan. And I've got chopped pecans right here. And um, you use your judgment on how many you want to use. They're expensive, so if you don't want to use a ton of them, don't. But I'm probably going to use at least a cup to a cup and a half. This cake can be frozen since it's just me and Chris here, I don't know that I want to eat this whole cake. He's going to love it. He loves anything German chocolate. All right. So there's the bottom. Now we're going to pour our batter in. Just spread it out even as you can. And now we're just going to dollop our cream cheese mixture on the cake. Now you don't have to swirl it, but I'm going to just a little bit. There's a lot on this end over here. This is going in the oven at 350 degrees for one whole hour.
could see coconuts bubbling a little bit. It looks like it's cratered. All right, see all those craters? That's why it's called an earthquake cake. <laughs> Got our milk. Now me. Chris just brought milk because we were out. And I'm going to cut a piece. Now, this has cooled off completely. I've never dumped one upside down just to see what it looks like, but we're just going to cut a piece out of this. Put it on our plate. I'm not show you how it looks. Sure, get around the bottom good. And it may take two pieces before I get a really nice, before I can lift a nice, no, it's lifting out pretty good. Lifting out pretty good. Looks delicious, don't it? Let's take a bite. Chris loves German chocolate. I usually make the homemade kind, but every once in a while it's good to do something fun. I think my sister-in-law makes this at Christmas time. I'm pretty sure she does. It's delicious. It's delicious, y'all. And it does taste like German chocolate. Let me say this. That is so good. There's nothing wrong with it. Instead of buying German chocolate icing out of a can, make sure you make this cake next time if you don't want to do the homemade kind. Because it is delicious. It tastes just like German chocolate. Mmm. Thanks for watching. Collard Valley Cooks. Where we cook, like Mama did. Bye, y'all. Love ya.